Hello everyone, Rice Time 911 here, and today in this tutorial, I'm going to be talking to you about how to create and edit lights in Giant Zedder. If you don't have Giant Zedder, you should go and download it. I'll include a link in the description where you can get the latest version. It's a very useful tool for modding, and in fact, it's pretty much required, so you might want to get that before starting this tutorial, if you don't have it. Okay, so let's say you have your giant there open and you want to create a light so you can go create light and then you have a light that's all you gotta do so lights are very useful for well vehicle mods creating headlights tail lights signal lights it's also useful on maps to create lights from buildings and other visual effects in game using lighting and, yeah, it's a pretty useful thing to know how to work with. So now, what I'm going to show you is the three types of lights, and basically explain what they all do to you. Okay, so to find out what type of light you have, you can select your light in the scene graph. If you don't have that window, scene graph will bring it up. And you also want window attributes, which is this over here on the right. So, if you have your light selected and you go to Attributes, then go to the Light section. Now, Type. This is a drop down box and it has three different types of lights you can choose from. So, let's take a look at the first type of light. And I'll explain what it does to you. Okay, so the first type is Point, and basically it works like a sun, it'll send light everywhere and anywhere pretty much. Rotating the light doesn't really do much to affect where the light shows up because it generally sends light off in all directions. So if you want to create like a sun for a map or something like that, this is the kind of light you want to go with. Or if you just want like a certain area to have light all around in the map, this is generally the light type you would use. Now, let's look at the second light type, spot. So basically, it works like a spotlight. It's pretty self-explanatory. So if you look at the yellow line and this here, the blue lines, it basically shows you this big blue circle where the light will be shining because where that big blue circle is pointing to that's where the light's going to show up and this light is affected by rotating always except this way pretty much well it might be affected by this at some point but anyway it's also affected by moving up and down and this is useful for headlights brake lights all the like on vehicle mods and it can also be used on maps for like street lights or anywhere where you want like a directional sort of light that has a small very uh, let's say specific area of effect yeah that's how I'll put it like you want it to shine in a certain place okay so now the last type of light is directional Directional lights work a lot like point type lights, except they shine in a certain direction and are affected by rotating. So as you can see, if I rotate this around, it changes how the light shines. So that's generally how point type lights work. So now that you know all three light types and what they do, we're going to take a look at editing some of these values for the lights. So now that you know all three light types and what they do and what they look like, we're going to look at how we can add these lights, these light types, to give us the look we desire. So, the first thing we're going to look at is range. So range, if you change that up, basically it'll change how far the light travels on point and spot type lights so 
if we change this to 20, and just make sure that these cubes are in the radius of the light, then we'll see that we have a much smaller range within this yellow circle here, the sphere. sphere. So that's basically changing the range changes how far the light goes. Alright, and it's the same with spotlight. When you change the range, it changes how far the light travels. Like if I change it to 10 here, you see the light won't go as far as if I put like 15, 19, it goes farther the higher the range number. Now, cone angle, if you change that, it changes how wide the area of effect is for the light. So as you can see, the blue circle gets bigger. And it's this... I'm not... It doesn't really do much for point type light because there isn't really a certain place for an angle. It's a sphere, the point type light. It's mostly for spotlights that you would change the angle. Now, drop off. If you change that, basically making a higher number makes the light softer, I believe. Because if you put 1 or 0, it seems that the light gets a lot more coarse. Whereas if you have a higher drop off, the light gets a lot smoother. So if you want a smoother light, then a higher drop off is the way to go. And as far as directional lights go, changing the range doesn't really appear to do much for them because it just shines the light off in a certain direction. And again, there's no not really any angle because it's just like a straight line. Now, what we're going to look at, just using the spot type light as an example, we're going to look at color, changing the color of a light. So let's just put this range back to something that makes sense. And this as well. Now, if we want to change the color of the light, we can just change color R, color G, and color B to get the light color we want. So like if we want a red light, we change B and G to 0, and then we'd have just red light. And if we want a green light, just one on green. If we want a blue light, just one on blue. Now if you want any other type of color light, you basically have to add this to... till you get the color you want. So there you go. That's the basics of how you use lights and how to change these values to get to light looking like you want it for your mod and the editor, however you, you are using it. So yeah, I do hope this tutorial on lights has helped you to learn something about using lights in Giant Saturn. So, thanks for watching, and this is Race Time 911. See you later.